Who's the Curry in Curry Psychology Group? I, I'm Dr. Curry. Hey team, Blake here with Crushing Defeat Media. Welcome to another video. This project is the third in my Dr. Curry trilogy. If you missed either of the first two videos, I will link to those in the description. This project here ended up being quite long, so I'm going to break it up into two separate videos. You found yourself at the first of these videos, so let's go ahead and get started. Crushing Defeat Media. In October 2021, um, I was asked uh, by counsel to provide a psychological evaluation of Ms. Heard. As a result of the work that you performed, did you form any opinions with respect to Ms. Heard? The results of Ms. Heard's evaluation supported two diagnoses, borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. So you just heard there what Dr. Curry diagnosed Amber with, and I wanted to see if either Amber's testimony or other audio recordings bared this out. So I've put together a bunch of side-by-sides, and I will leave it up to you whether or not this offers proof of this diagnosis, but I think it's pretty interesting if you view them in totality. Um, so there were a couple of characteristics that she noted in her self-report that were consistent with these personality disorders. Um, the first was actually my own behavioral observations of her based on her self-report. So one of the hallmark characteristics of histrionic personality disorder is sort of a overly dramatic presentation. We call this impressionistic speech. I got up, I went to the car, I sat in my car, and I felt like I sat there forever. I didn't want to turn the key. I just leaned my head up against the window. And I remember just seeing my breath on the, on the windshield, you know, on the, the glass of the, uh, of the window of the door, just seeing my breath and trying to will myself to have the strength to know what I should do in this moment. So it tends to be very flowery. It uses a lot of descriptive words like magical, wonderful. You know, it was, it was, it was beautiful. It, it was, um, I felt like this man knew me and saw me in a way that no one else had. I felt he understood me. I felt he understood where I came from, I, I felt like, I felt that like when I was around Johnny, I felt like the most beautiful person in the whole world. You know, it made me feel seen, made me feel like a million dollars. And it can go on for quite some time and yet it really lacks any substance. So at the end, you're left wondering what was just said or what the answer is to the actual question. So that occurred a number of times, um, and it also represented the kind the quick shifts you'll see between emotions. So she would suddenly be one way, and then she would become very animated. Do you believe you're an abuser? No. Do you believe you abused me physically? Do I physically believe? I mean, do I believe I physically abused you? Yes. You know, I'm 115, well, not anymore, but I was 115 pounds. I'm that's a 115 pound woman, and you're going to say I have the capacity to abuse That's not the question. That's not the question. Have I ever been able, have I ever been able to knock you off of your feet? You started, you, off your balance? you started these things. Well, you are going to get up on the stand, Johnny, and say she started it, really? I have never been able to overpower you. That's the difference between me and you. Why did you try? And that's the difference that the whole world and that a jury and that a judge will see is that there is a very big difference between me and you. And when people are displaying these emotions with this personality disorder, it, there's a sense of shallowness to it. People who are observing them will feel like uh, it's almost play acting. I'm very interested in what you all think of Amber's testimony, especially these clips that I show. Do you think it was acting? Do you think it was real emotion? I, um, by June, I was, 
so torn. I was so in love with this person because when it was good, it was so good. You've never felt love like that. At least that's how it felt. <laughs> so much. I felt like he recognized me and I recognized him and there was just something there that that is the love of my life. And he was. He was, but he was also this other thing. He was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful, awful thing that would come out and take over and it was, you couldn't see the Johnny I loved underneath it. It was this other thing. And no one told him, no one was honest with him. No one, you know, he'd pass out in his own vomit. And they might not be able to put their finger on it, but part of it is because of the rapidness with which the person can switch emotions and also the lack of substance. They don't really refer to, I feel this way. They might describe emotions, they might describe events, but very rarely, and I misheard did not say, I feel vulnerable. She never really indicated a vulnerable feeling of her own. Listen here in this audio recording for Amber's quick shifts in emotion. These were often prompted whenever Johnny would stand up for himself. Why, if you want to get private, is, uh, is TMZ being fed information literally by Laura Walker and Martin Singer every step of the way? Take oh, really, oh, my, 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 my arrest record? What's next in the media? The rumors that I'm disturbing? Of course. Of course I can expect that next. I've known every step of the way. Every single step of the way. Everything you'd give them. You don't think I'd give them. I give them. That's it. I give them. I'll see you in court. No, I'll fucking see you in court. I will fucking see you in court. I never fucking said that. I never told anyone that. You fucking trusted me with that, and I've never fucking told anyone that. And you know what, Amber? Thank you. This is my no. This is me. This is me saying I tried, and thank you, and I will see you in fucking court. You don't want to fucking make nice, nice. I'm trying. I'm trying. Stop. I can't believe Stop. you're doing this to me. Stop. I can't believe it. There's no need to be cruel on top of it. You've been nothing but cruel, and I'm going to court with you. I might, I've been, I'm might. i just sitting here defending myself, and it makes you so angry. You have no, not let up. You keep blaming. No, myself. what you just said. I'm defending myself. What you, defending myself. Me, what you just I'm said to me. What you just said to me. You're defending yourself against me about something I didn't fucking do, and I'm not gonna fight with you because I know this oh, shit lasts I did forever. It. I did it. I could expect it next. I am defending myself. Excuse me. I am right. defending myself. Excuse I'm me. I'm defending myself. You're on the phone right now, and you're attacking me. Excuse me. I'll be right back. But can you give me one minute, please? May I have one minute, please? Um, one of the primary things I learned was that um, she had a very a uh, sophisticated way of minimizing any personal problems. Um, I also learned that she tends to, uh, well, there were a number of characteristics that were consistent with the eventual diagnoses, but um, some of the primary characteristics, and I'm gonna try to condense 25 pages here, were essentially um, externalization of blame, this next audio clip is quite long, so keep minimizing and externalizing blame in mind, and I think the clip will speak for itself. You know, I, I want the trust back. I don't. You can deflect all you want, say it's my fault, say how dare I get angry at you ever, whatever. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't know. I, I don't, and I don't help. know. I don't know what. And the sometimes thing is. I don't. I don't want to fucking be there and go through the shit. I don't, man. I don't. I know. I don't want to, because I don't want to fucking fight. But it doesn't have to be one. It's not like I'm saying, hey, choose fight. You just said I get mad. I'm going to scream. No, I didn't say oh, that's always the case. I said, yeah, I'm mad. It happens. It happens. 
Yes, I know. That happens often. If you think I'm some f suck it, fucking tyrant or bully, then don't fucking be with me. But don't sit here and insult me like I have a f I'm the fuck up because I have the but you're audacity the one to get saying me that I'm the tyrant and the bully and the and at the same time the the, the guy you. that runs oh, away yeah. and you the are you run away every single fight. Okay, so I mean, then what are you? Then I'm not doing lying about it. Then what are you doing with me? I already answered that. I already spent. We went through this conversation literally five minutes ago. I, I answered this already five minutes ago. You just said to me that I shouldn't be with you. No, I said if That's you. What I feel. No, I said if I'm some, you know, harping bully, which is what you make me sound like. Like I'm like constantly on you, making you feel bad. That's because that's what I do. And then you ignore everything. You take me for granted. You're ignoring everything that I do for you. You make me sound terrible. You talk about me in a terrible way. You uh, you do not fight for me. And then you want to sit here and make me sound so terrible mean, to be around. What do you mean I don't fight for you? you don't, I, everything I've already explained. No, Ten fight, minutes no, fight for you. I don't understand. What you never, mean? ever do the work. Put in the work. If we're arguing about something, you don't ever try to get to the bottom of it, figure out, make the peace. You want to make it easy on you so you split. You don't fight for me. You don't fight when there's a problem. You don't come to me. You don't uh, uh, make peace with me. You never extend an olive branch. You're never the bigger guy. You're never the one that's like, okay, I'm going to put my own feelings aside for a second and say, this is bigger than us. Let's stop fighting. You never are the one to come and knock on my door. You take me for granted. It's not true. It's not true. I'm not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and those are diff that's different. Else at me. That's different. That's what one does not <laughs> negate the other. That's irrelevant. It's a complete non sequitur. Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean that you vases. come and knock on the door. Just because there are vases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Really? I should just let you throw. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're putting words in my mouth and then making no, non sequiturs. I'm giving you a situation. No, you're trying to justify how you don't or do come to the door. No, Based I'm on whether justifying. I, throw pots and pans. It's irrelevant. No, I am justifying how you, you 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 seem to think that there's this cowardice in me that runs away and I don't fight for you. Uh, tending to have a lot of inner hostility that is attempted to be controlled, um, a tendency to be very self righteous, but to also deny that self righteousness and to judge others um, critically uh, against these sort of high standards for moral value, but also to deny doing that, essentially to, to claim that one is uh, uh, very non-judgmental and accepting and yet very full of rage, really. You can't run away every fight. You can't. It's easy. It's, it, it's not brave. It's not strong. It's harder to say to somebody, I want to work this out. I want to face what I have. I want to face what you have. I want to work it out with you. You're not working it out. You're running away, and then you make me be the bigger person every single time and come to you and knock on the door and come to this house and say, hey, we're married. It's supposed to be sacred. Come I down, calm you. down. I made you. Yes, by default. If you're never the one to do it, one of us is, and I'm the one to do it every time. It means I'm the bigger person every time. It means I have to be the strong one. It means every time I have to fight for our relationship, and you get to be not... You get to be lazy. You get to be cowardly. I don't then know what, what it is. What are you is. here for? What do you need me Once for? Once again, I am fighting for the relationship. I With want... a guy that you don't fucking trust or like? Why? I did not say I didn't like you. I love you. You're my favorite person in the world. I don't see how I Remember be. what I said at the beginning? I'm sorry you feel like you can't imagine it. But I said this to you at the beginning of this conversation. I said, you're my favorite person in the whole world. If you weren't the most magnetic, shiny, beautiful, interesting, dynamic person I had ever met in my life, it would be so easy to walk away from this bratty thing that you Untrustworthy, do. Untrustworthy. Uh, um, uh, Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I said I can't trust. I can't trust. So externalization of blame, um, a lot of inner anger and hostility, sometimes that anger among these groups with similar scores, these people might have that anger kind of explode out at times. And it's, and it's you know, manic and angry. What the f***, Amber? I get angry. I get, I'm human. They tend to be very passive aggressive. They may be self-indulgent, very self-centered. I'm of the opinion that these next clips show someone who is self-centered, but in a contradictory way. What do you think? I 
Baby. 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 Amber, I didn't call you those things. I, I was so caught up in the relationship and also very occupied in defending what I only as could assume he believed, these accusations, um, that, you know, I didn't, I didn't internalize, like, I didn't make that big of a deal of it. I'm, you know, I kind of pride myself on being tough and, you know, I don't make a big deal out of, you know, smaller injuries. And I know that sounds horrible. Real bad. I, don't, I just want to clear my name. I've been telling all the lawyers this in the beginning and your lawyers knew this. You cannot you clear up your name now. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them lie to you. I have said only this from the very beginning. I only have my integrity. And they, the unfortunate thing is... And what about mine? They need to step further. What about mine? They uh, could use manipulation tactics to try to get their needs met, very needy of attention, acceptance, approval. I'm not just a honeymoon now, am I? I'm talking about many months. And was it all the honeymoon? No. I have been at your side throughout it all. You said, why did you come to Rio? And I answered you. I would love for it to be better. I have no fucking consistency, no safety, no security. The relationship is something me is something you don't fight for, you don't stand up for, you always run from when it's tough. I, I'm telling you, I need more. I need. We didn't say vows. You didn't make them exactly in the same in that in that way, you know. But, but now is a fucking time. I need to know if you're gonna be there. I want promises. I told you that at the beginning of this conversation. I need promises. That you're gonna fucking be there. Amber says you don't fight for me a lot in these recordings and if you've ever thought about saying you don't fight for me to someone just know it's very confusing doesn't mean a lot so please be more specific they tend to uh, distance people who are close to them initially they may seem very charming they're very socially sophisticated actually that was a major component on there they have a capacity to kind of offer some of their faults, but uh, in a way, but only the ones that people think of lightly and can all relate to. Your hands on me, I've used through a phone in my face, and I have gotten crazy in the past, and I truly thought I need to stop this madness before I get hurt. Oh my God. And I never think about myself that way. I never defend myself that way. I never see myself as a victim. It's right. too fault, you know? All right, yeah. It's like when someone says, I'm a perfectionist, I just work way too hard. And so they can present as very fair and balanced, but in actuality, they really might uh, uh, be very judgmental of others and unaware of problems in their behavior and their thinking. Fair and balanced and problems with behavior and thinking. So look at these next clips, kind of compare them together, keeping those things in mind. So he didn't think these things were true. And sometimes, you know, I, he would shift accusations while I'm trying to dispel one accusation, he'd start another one and, um, nothing I could do to calm him down. It seemed like I'd walk away and that would make it worse. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking. What about all the other times you split? Come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not. Well, on a plane, I can't split. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence involved. And that you do it and meet, like at the very beginning of fights these days. And if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house, it does nothing but perpetuate the fight. Um, I remember he, in my apartment in Orange, it would, he would grab me by the hair or he'd grab me by the arm, face, pull me into him, scream at me that way. He'd smash things around me. Then he would smash things very close to me. We have to be apart from one another, whether it's for fucking an hour or 10 hours or fucking a day. We must. There can be no physical violence. 
I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad, I lose it. What code type was Miss Heard? Miss Heard had the clearest code type was 3-6. So a 3-6 code type, a lot of that anger is expressed in this code type. Um, there can be actually a lot of cruelty. Oh, my God. Lay What else? What else other thing do you want to add? Can't talk you to you lying pieces. Bobby you what? Oh, no. I want to know. Yeah, I want to know. Get out of your Uber's I'm out. I'm kind of waiting. You go get it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in the Wait, is there no other place for you to run in your 15 other houses to go run? Come on. Go be a real married man. And go deal with your shit the way that a man does. Go run to the next house. Oh, shit, no. Every man does. Yeah. Go. go run through. away. I know it's hard You're to look at yourself. You're a fucking ridiculous clown. It's You're hard. a panicked fucking clown. It's hard. It's hard. You're screwing everybody else Poor over thing. to get You're your right. fucking... You're right. That's you what I do. <laughs> you are the most spoiled fucking brat. <laughs> and you've got everybody out here almost oh, full, but it don't right. last long. You're right. I'm I've been sorry. here a lot longer you're than right. you. You're right. you got to figure it out. You don't you have to figure out what you have to <laughs> offer as opposed to going out and getting your shits <laughs> out. You're right. That's what I do. No matter whose side you come down on this, I think we can all agree that these two individuals just are not good together. Please flip the cassette over to side B to continue the adventure.